Okay, let's take a look at an example of applying a quadratic equation, in particular gravity problems where gravity is pulling an object downward. In this particular problem, a stone is dropped off a 64-foot building, and the height of the stone, h, the h variable, can be modeled with this equation. So h is going to be determined by this equation, where t is the time the stone has been falling. Um, let's mention that the time here is in seconds. Seconds. Okay, so this first question is a simple one. Determine the height of the stone after 0.5 seconds. So what we're looking for here is the value of h. Determine the height. So the question is h. And what's given to us is the time, 0.5. So t is 0.5. So all we do is we plug 0.5 in for t and then determine h. So h equals negative 16 times 0.5 squared plus 64. Solving, uh, you get 0.25. Make sure to square this before you multiply. Negative 16 times 0.25 is negative 4 plus 64. So h is 60. That means the height of the stone after 0.5 seconds is 60 feet. Simple enough, right? So that's an example where we're given the time and have to determine the height. We'd never had to, in this case, we never had to get h by itself. It was already by itself in the original problem. Okay. So here's a more interesting example where we need to determine the height of the stone or the time at which the stone is 48 feet off the ground. So now we're looking for the time and we're given the height. So now we plug 48 in for the h variable. So we have 48 equals negative 16 t squared plus 64. And now this equation is a bit different, right? Because now the variable is t. It's not by itself. And it's squared. So this is a quadratic equation. So now I'm not going to go into how to solve a quadratic equation. That's a, that's a different video. There are lots of methods. You could try factoring if it works. Uh, the class I'm making this for right now actually would use factoring for this because it will factor. But you could use the quadratic formula or completing the square if you know those techniques as well. So when you solve this, you'd get 0 on one side. So you subtract the 48. And then you try to apply whatever technique you want. Um, again, the class I'm making this for should factor. Um, but regardless, do whatever you You should end up with t equals negative 1 or t equals positive 1. Well, t is the time the stone has been falling. So this makes no sense here. You can't fall for negative one second. So the time is one second. It takes one second for the stone to drop from the top of the building at 64 feet down to 48 feet. It takes one second for that to happen. OK, last example for this video. Determine the time at which the stone hits the ground. Now wait a second. They have to give us a height or a time, right, to use this equation. And they didn't do that. But if you think about it, what does it mean when the stone hits the ground? Well, that tells us the height of the stone is 0. Okay, so it's just a tricky way of telling us that h is 0. And so if h is 0, we're trying to find time. The other hint is it says determine the time. So we know time is going to be the unknown. So somehow we have to know the h value. So h is 0 because the stone hits the ground. So we plug 0 in to the equation for h. So 0 equals negative 16 t squared plus 64. Again, solve this quadratic equation however you like. My students uh, for this class will use factoring. Sorry to keep saying that. I just want to emphasize it. And you should get t equals negative 2 or t equals positive 2. And again, since t is time, it can't be negative. So it takes 2 seconds for the stone to drop from the top of the building at 60.